Hero to Zero, production by Lynn and Dave. Episode 1, The Golden Boy. Act 1, Scene 1. Setting a bustling corporate office with cubicles, computers, and an air of efficiency. At center stage stands Mark, mid-30s in a sharp suit. He's the golden boy of the office, confident, charismatic, and admired by all. A giant banner reads, Employee of the Year, Mark Wilson. You know the feeling when you're on top of the world? That was me, Mark Wilson, Employee of the Year, three times running. Yeah, I had it all. Fancy desk, a window view, and even Susan in accounting giving me extra donuts on Fridays. What could go wrong, right? Well, everything. Sound cue, a distant thunderclap. Enter Jane, bubbly and a tad gossipy, and Tom, Mark's smirking work rival. They both sit at their desks, glancing nervously at Mark. Mark, did you uh, hear about the disaster this morning? <laughs> disaster? No, I've been too busy fixing everyone else's mistakes. What happened? Oh, just the small matter of the entire client database being deleted. No big deal. <laughs> Yikes, glad it wasn't me. Must have been someone from IT, right? Um, about that? Yeah, Mark, your computer logged in at the exact time of the incident. Everyone's talking. What? No way. I was in the meeting this morning. You saw me, Tom. Who knows what you get up to with that fancy setup of yours. Maybe you've got, like, remote mind control or just really fast fingers. Mark, HR's looking into it. You might want to prepare yourself. This is a joke, right? It wasn't me. Yeah, he wrote a zero, buddy. Tough break. Sound cue, a loud, comical, womp womp noise. Act 1, Scene 2, Setting. A cold, sterile HR office. Lisa, the HR manager, sits at her desk, flipping through a thick file. Mark enters, looking nervous, tugging at his tie. Mark, we need to talk. This database issue, it's serious. Lisa, I didn't delete anything. There's been a mistake. All the evidence points to you, your login, your credentials. My login? Someone must have hacked me. I've been framed. You know me. I know, Mark, but the logs don't lie. Until we sort this out, you're suspended indefinitely. Suspended? But I didn't do anything. You can leave now, Mark. Sound cue, a door slam. Act 1, Scene 3. Setting. Mark's small, cluttered apartment. There's a sagging old couch at center stage, clearly the only thing Mark's truly invested in. He drags himself in, slumps onto the couch, his suit crumpled, and starts scrolling mindlessly on his phone. He tosses the phone aside and buries his head in his hands. That's it. One mistake I didn't even make, and it's all over. From hero to zero, just like that. My career, my reputation, all gone. Even this couch looks like it's given up on me. Suddenly the couch shifts. A loud creak is heard, and the couch... A deep, gravelly voice breaks the silence. Oh, for the love of cushions, stop moping, will ya? Well, what? Who said that? It's me, the couch. Yeah, I'm talking. Surprised? You? You're talking? Well, I sure ain't doing yoga. Listen, pal, you've been parked on me for years. I've seen it all. And right now, you look worse than that time you tried to do your own taxes. Hey, that was complicated. What's complicated is you giving up so easily. He wrote a zero, huh? Well, guess what? I've got springs tougher than your willpower, buddy. You wouldn't understand. Everything I've worked for, gone. I'm finished. Finished? Please. You know how many people have sat on me after worse days than this? I had a guy once lose his job, his girlfriend, and his cat all in one afternoon. And you know what he did? What? He got up, stopped whining, and moved on. You're seriously giving me a pep talk right now? You're a couch? I'm your couch, and I'm tired of your pity party. So here's what you're going to do. Stand up, wash your face, and fight back. Clear your name. You didn't delete that database, so prove it. It's not that simple, couch. People think I'm guilty. Then give them a reason to think otherwise. You think the office chair would sit there and take it? No way. That thing's got wheels. It moves. But I'm suspended. What can I do? 
You've got a brain, don't you? Use it. Start by checking your computer. Maybe someone left a clue. Heck, for all you know, it was Tom. That guy's always been a snake in a tire. In a tie. Tom, he wouldn't. Come on, Mark. That guy's been gunning for your spot since the moment you got promoted. You really think this is all some accident? Time to wake up and smell the upholstery. You know what? You're right. Tom has been acting weird lately. Maybe he's behind this. Maybe I can catch him in the act. Now we're talking. Go on, hero. Don't let this zero moment define you. You've still got some fight left in you. I'll get into my computer, check the logs. Maybe I'll find proof. I could send it straight to HR, blow this whole thing wide open. Atta boy, and hey, when you clear your name, maybe we can talk about upgrading those throw pillows, huh? <laughs> Deal. And maybe, just maybe, I'll stop eating chips on you. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Mark gives the couch a thumbs up, more confident now. He grabs his laptop and starts working, newfound determination in his eyes. Maybe I'm not going from hero to zero after all. Maybe this is just the halftime show and I'm coming out swinging. Cue upbeat music as the lights dim and Mark types furiously, ready to take back control of his life. Blackout. End of Act 1. Act 2 follows Mark as he uncovers the truth with the couch continuing to dish out tough love and sage advice. Through comedic twists and turns, Mark's journey from despair to redemption unfolds in hilarious and unexpected ways.